Uh, well, we're Zoe and Ross from Tiger Aspect Productions, and we're down here making an ITV series called Drama Trails. David, can you tell me, who did you decide to base uh, Mike Walker on? There, was, there were no character descriptions whatsoever. I described Walker as tall, dark and handsome, early 30s. <laughs> so he ended up with me. So, I mean, I'm bald in Glaswegian in his 40s. So that was a mistake from the beginning. And I thought, well, who is he? I wanted to make him kind of, to give him a kind of definition. So I thought, I'll shave my head, I'll put a scar through my eyes, snap the tips off my cigarettes, uh, and make him a, a hard-talking, tough little cop who doesn't suffer fools gladly, who's, who's MO is to get the scum off the streets and lock him up and throw away the key. Um, I guess in the beginning I based Walker on a, a cross between my father, who was a very strict disciplinarian when I was young. And again, he was he was head of a maintenance squad in a steel yard of, uh, of electricians and plumbers and, and carpenters and stuff. Highly respected, but feared as well. Um, so I guess. A lot of Walker is based on him and on my favourite actor, Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart was, he's not a, he's not a greedy actor. He, he's economically coming, go, rattle through his lines like a machine gun. But within that, he will convey emotion, he will convey information, he will, he will uh, it'll convey drama, oh, without, without self-indulging him. I just think he's a great example to us all. So I love the idea that I come in and I, Linda often describes me as eating up lines. Uh, as a character, and I think Humphrey Bogart did that. But the personality is kind of based on my father. Roisin is um, an eye dotter and a T cross. And totally and utterly incompetent. She's really, really useless. God, that's the work husband. There's nothing you can do about him. Um, she's she's efficient, and she likes to um, she likes to go by the book, which is which is the drama with Mike Walker, who doesn't go by the book and um, refuses to do what he's told, which is why we have such a competitive relationship. So there's a good power struggle between them off screen. He's a nightmare. I can't work with the man. It's I mean, there's beatings before lunch. Right, good luck. No, he's hilarious. We have a great time, and. Um, he is hilarious and what we do, we just giggle. I've known him for many years and he's a pain in the arse but I love him. Off screen we have a fantastic relationship because we go back a long way because I, I actually gave Vicky her first job. Good God, I can't remember how many years ago. And something I, in a TV series that I directed and she was a drama student. Uh, and then years later we ended up doing a movie together called Last Great Wilderness. Uh, and now this, so uh, when she came on as my co-star, it was an utter delight. She's nothing but great fun. How she manages to cope with being a mother with two young kids, under three, and being a co-star in a major series like this, I have no idea how she does it. I take my hat off to her. She's a superwoman. Linda is fantastically open to suggestion and anything that we might come up with. If she doesn't like it, she's going to totally ignore us, quite rightly. Um, she is the boss of bosses, she's the queen of her genre, there's, there's nobody better, there really is nobody better and um, she keeps, even though she doesn't write all the scripts, because we're doing so many of them at the moment, she oversees them all, uh, she makes sure that all the writers are towing her line quite rightly and um, I think that they all come away having said they've learned a vast amount. So, you know, she's an, she turns up on set and inspires everybody with enthusiasm and loyalty and, and you come away thinking she's seven foot tall, but she's actually tiny because she's just buckets of personality. I guess the moral dilemmas that, that Walker goes through, that's what, that's what I encourage from, from Linda and the writers. I love it when, you, when he's faced with a moral dilemma. Does he step over the mark? Does he break the rules? Uh, to get the man that he wants or the woman he wants to lock him up. And in Walker's eyes, yeah, to hell with it. You know, he's got nothing else. What's the point of leaving him on the streets? He just he breaks the rules a little bit. No one picks up on it. Who gives a shit? Lock him up and throw away the key. At the moment, we're at a health club killing some innocent-ish people with um, nice violent squibs, which is a sucker that goes on his chest and it's got electrical wires and on a remote control, one of our FX guys presses a button and they explode with blood. Not in your chest, thankfully, but away from, through the shirt, and it gives you that bullet, bullet wound. You've seen what we're going to do after this. Walker is actually furious that the witness has been, has been shot. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, he's thrilled, because at least the one witness is his sidekick, Diaz Satchel. Uh, I mean, to cut a long story short, his memory isn't too good. 
and that infuriates Walker because we think we've got him back to rights and because of his, his terrible memory and the fact he wasn't operating or thinking as a cop should and getting the description uh, to a T, uh, he may slip through our hands. I've heard a few rumours about Roisin's driving. Can you talk to me about that? Roisin is an excellent driver. She likes speed and she's not too keen on rules. <laughs> I love driving with Roisin because you do, I get to do exactly the opposite of what you're supposed to do when we're on the road. And that's a bit more guerrilla filming because I don't think they know that we're doing it. I love taking corners at great speed. We have great moments on screen when we really do go for each other, but we don't plan them. Uh, there are usually one or two points within each film where we go for each other's jugular, which is quite right. It's the nature of their relationship. They're both, they're both high-end cops, they're both obsessive cops, uh, and neither of them suffer fools gladly. They're both perfectionists, so any little chink in each other's armour, they will go for it. Um, we don't plan them, they just come out on the day organically in rehearsals and we just begin to throw things around a little bit and play the scene and see, see what it needs, see what the, the arc of, the dramatic arc of the scene, see where it takes us and that's it. But it's great fun. We've now been here and everywhere, car parks of London, for 10 months. We've killed a lot of people, they all deserved it. And we're now bandied together as such a group that if you see us in a pub, know that there's someone dead around the corner because we know how to kill people now. Not as good at catching them, sometimes. Uh, the atmosphere on set is always great. We work with a really close-knit bunch of people who worked with us for years, so it's like a family. When you come to work in the morning, it's lovely. Whether you've got props, a camera, or sound, wardrobe, makeup. Uh, we worked with them over quite a few films, so it makes it, makes it special. They're a great bunch of people.